It's the recent move by the federal government to fund community policing a subtle move to kill a Moteco initiative? And the recent video by Femi Fonikayo that raises the question, is there any respect for Nigerian journalists? This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladeinde. Welcome to Plots Politics. The comment made by Garuba Shehu, the presidential aide on media and publicity to President Muhammadu Buhari on states clamoring for community policing seems to have begun a fresh case of controversy. Garuba Shehu had earlier stated that the Amoteku and other forms of community policing will be regulated by the police. In response to this, the development agenda for Western Nigeria Commission dawned said a moteku is being guided by the state laws. What really does the law say? Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Sheye Oyeleye, the Director General of Dawn Commission. Good evening, sir. Good evening, thank you for having me here. Yeah, and to also join us in this conversation is the former Assistant Director of the DSS, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening. Oh, good. Good to have you. I hope there's no too much delay in getting your response. But let me start with Mr. Oyele. I, uh, it's out there, and uh, I don't know whether there is some form of uh, misunderstanding on what the presidency seems to be saying. We understand, or we assumed, that uh, Amotekun is done and dusted, and there is no kind of ambiguity on the structure of Amotekun. Do you still believe there is no ambiguity or the presidency is here to understand how it should be done? Well, um, thank you very much, Kayode. Um, it's um, good evening once again, viewers. I, 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 I was a bit uh, mystified when I um, listened to Garbashio yesterday and he was talking about um, the IG of police supervising the operations of uh, Amotecu in the individual states. And... Um, when I said I was a bit mystified, it's because um, when Amoteku was set up, um, the individual states enacted laws to back its operations in the states. I mean, Amoteku is the code name or the other name for Western Nigeria Security Network. Western Nigeria, the six states in Southwest Nigeria, as we call it. And every, each of the states backed it up with a legislation that was assented to by the governor, which detailed the operations of the outfit. So the structure has been agreed on. Everything that pertains to its takeoff has been agreed on. And you realize, or oh, in some states like Ondo, for example, it is taken off fully. It was launched last week. The training has been completed. Some states are about to take off as well. And, and so when the Garba show, um, the SA media to, the, to Mr. President, came on TV to say something totally different, we were a bit um, shocked. But thank, thankfully, um, Mr. Governor in Ondo State, Arakure Rotimi Akure Rotimi, has um, basically spoken for his colleague governors in the Southwest by saying that um, that is not applicable. What he said is not totally right and that um, maybe he needs, he himself, um, Garba Sheo, will have to speak to the Inspector General, who will probably enlighten him on the operations of Amotekun as backed by the law in the six states. So um, I'm not sure there's any confusion at all. Um, and even if you listen to Garba Sheo yesterday during the interview, he himself contradicted. It was, it was a bundle of contradictions at some point because he did say that um, the Amoteku in the States is being guided by the laws enacted in the States. So I was wondering that uh, where did the IG come in? 
as far as I know, and I have all the laws of the six states with me, there is nowhere where it states that the IG or police will be the one um, directing the affairs okay. of the outfits. Okay. The I'll come back to you to really talk more on the structure that you, you know about. Or, because uh, let me also mm. put it on record that Dawn Commission, uh, that Amoteko is their brainchild. They are the one who actually developed the structure and they are uh, running it. So you are definitely competent to talk about it. But let me quickly get the perspective of Mr. Macri. Uh, I mean, want to test, or not test, I mean, want to sample your knowledge of the law now, because each time we hear that security is under the exclusive list, is that what uh, uh, Garba Shewu seems to be coming under to say that uh, it has to come from the federal and not necessarily the regions? Yes, um, it is um, this exclusive and uh, non-exclusive list uh, uh, problem that uh, has been uh, taking us front and back. Um, when Amoteku came up, there was a lot of resistance. Uh, at that time, the Attorney General said that it was illegal. Uh, of course, I was also there to say that uh, the way they formed it was not right because they have to go and register it first. When it first came out, it was not registered. So after the registration and everything, I think there was this uh, agreement where even the uh, uh, IG, IGP came and had a meeting with them in the West. Uh, they went even to Abuja to have a meeting with him. And everything went on fine. Uh, then we didn't hear much about it until, uh, was it on those states? that uh, came out with their uniformed uh, people. And um, I was even worried that if that is not the whole idea of what Aboteku should be, because I was looking at Aboteku as a web, of, a web of spies that are working for government. Whether they are working for the, uh, the state government or they are also going to liaise with the federal government, but they are supposed to be hunters, artisans, all kinds of people that are out there undercover, not in uniform. But uh, anyway, I saw them in uniform. Maybe that's a plan that uh, the state government has for it. But uh, that, is, uh, that is what we are seeing right now. Um, basically, it is, uh, I, I feel that the federal government has lost its init initiative in providing security for the common people, uh, bringing down security to the grassroots, um, and uh, in an attempt to protect themselves, uh, the states are coming up with all kinds of things to at least see that, especially led by the Southwest, to see that they protect themselves. If government cannot protect you, then you have to protect yourself. Okay. But again, um, when you talk about police, they keep on telling you that uh, the Constitution says there will be only one police force. So any other kind of police is illegal. Uh, and that's why we're pushing that at least amend that portion so that there will be other polices, okay. other police organizations. Okay. United States have 18,000 police agencies, you know, and here, why can't we? even expanding down to the states, uh, we are still hanging on to the colonial uh, bridge. Okay, Mr. Macri, so I, I don't want I you to exhaust... We'll I don't about want you to more. exhaust all the conversation on that. I will come back to you. Let me go back to Mr. Yile. Uh, uh, he has mentioned something critical, and probably we need to uh, look at the structure of Amoteko. Um, How do you explain to those who probably don't understand the legal framework of Amoteko um, in terms of structure now we're talking about federal policing. And some people said, is this a sort to move to say that we're still going to be one police, like Mr. Macri described? Uh, thank you again, Coyote. You see, um, it, it was made clear in um, January when, when it was launched in the battle that um, the Western Nigeria Security Network is a complementary outfit 
to the existing security agencies. And I'm glad that uh, Mr. Macri made, um, um, touched on that briefly. You see, we, we, we live um, in a federal country of about 200 million people. And the colonial relic of police that was bequeathed to us over 70, 80 years ago, we have refused to move. And the population, when we got our independence in 1960, is not the same population that we have today. So the challenges Nigeria is facing now, you can't compare with the challenges of 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And if you call a governor, a sitting governor, the chief security officer of that state, it behoves on that governor to ensure that his primary duty is to safeguard lives and property. So when um, the Western Nigeria security outfit was conceived, the idea is that the police, are, this police, Nigerian police is doing well. Yeah, they are overstretched. You have a police of less than 400,000 to cater for 200 million people. It wasn't working. It's not their fault. So they look at, looked at the powers available to them and set up this outfit. And thankfully, as um, it's been noted, they went to the state house of assembly to give it a structure. So you have a board headed by whoever, I mean, the state is slightly different in all the states. In some states, the board is headed by a retired, uh, retired security person. In some states, it doesn't specifically say that. So there is a board that supervises the operations in every state. Even in the states, on the board, you will have existing security agencies included on the board. So maybe the police, the civil defense, the army will be on the board. It's all in the, in the law that Mr. was Yelaya, for our Mr. Yelaya, so, so yeah. just to quickly interject so that you continue your thought, uh, is it okay to say that this federal policing is a welcome idea or you think this is a subtle duplicity of community policing? That I'm uh, you, you see, um, <laughs> look, let's look, let's take UK as an example. UK is a very small country. Let's take London. London has several police forces, even within that small space. But you see, we want to hang on. And I, I'm not disparaging community policing that the federal government is about to set up. It's also another welcome layer because we don't even have enough. But what we must be careful about and guard against is that that impression that is gradually creeping in that maybe community policing has been hurriedly put together, or community police has been hurriedly put together to try and nullify whatever efforts individual states across the country are trying to put together to safeguard their people. I hope that is not the case. So it, it, uh, it, it, we shouldn't have any like suspicion, mutual suspicion of each other. Oh, let us quickly set this up so that that is not going to, so that the, um, the, the, the Amoteco, as an example, will no longer be necessary. I can assure you, and as even as the chairman of the Western Nigeria Governors Forum said this morning, Amoteco has come to stay as a complementary effort to the existing security apparatus. And okay. as Mr. Macri said, he said he was surprised that he saw them in uniforms. Well, Again, you, um, without giving too much away, you're not going to see all of them in uniform anyway. It's maybe just a ceremonial thing. <laughs> so, okay. and you, as you rightly said, they're going to be the informants, the eyes, and um, okay. the heirs of the government. So, and don't forget the, that if an Amotekun person arrests a criminal, they hand them over to the police. So they're meant to work hand in gloves. It is not in competition. It is clearly a complementary outfit. And as I said, again, this is a federal system that we are operating. Okay, Mr. We are all stakeholders. Everyone is a Mr. stakeholder. Mr. No, one is, no one has a bigger stake than the other. Okay. We all have the same stake. Okay. And it is our duty to ensure that we have a country that works for everyone, including okay. providing security, which is the most important thing. Okay, Mr. Ile, let, let, uh, uh, it's a triangle, so let me go to the other side now. Uh, Mr. Uh, Macri, 
Uh, are you seeing what we don't see here? Are we seeing like the way I asked uh, Mr. Yele? Is this a subtle way of saying that, uh, or let's even look at the funding, so to say, because we see that these state governors assist the police force, no matter the budgeting at the federal, they have a way, pardon my language, I'm coming with that word again, bankrolling some of the uh, responsibilities <laughs> of the police. So basically, I I'm looking at, are we going to have a problem with the funding of the federal policing that 13 billion is approved now? Is that to say that uh, state government is going to sabotage the effort of this federal policing and focus on Amoteko? You see, uh, we are trying to do the same thing over and over and over again. And uh, we are not going to get a new result. More than 10 years ago, we have been fighting for state police. In fact, I can tell you one thing. Uh, during the period where PDP and APC was around, the Lagos here, yeah, APC in Lagos, was right in the forefront of state police. I remember I've been on television with the uh, security advisor to the, to the governor of Fashola, and we were there, you know, giving the reasons why there should be a state police. And uh, when the APC won to the central, we were happy that at least state police is going to come out. They went in there and they shuttled it. Now, what is all this all about? You know, that's why I say that whether there is some uh, unseen or hidden hands that are moving around. It's not that. Because we believe that, you know, the whole idea is not to form a police unit or a police agency owned by the governor. You know, that is not the idea. You know, and if they have to form a state police, or even this Amoteku, it is going to be independent of the governor. What they are supposed to do if you form state police is to enforce the state laws. And then, of course, local government police will enforce the local government laws, the bylaws of the local government. But here yeah, we have this tendency of politicizing the police and then using it, using it by us against our opponents. So this is the problem we are facing right now. There is no police IG that has agreed. Even when we try to push the state police uh, bill in the National Assembly, it is always killed by retired IGPs or the, the deputy inspector generals who are in the Senate. They will say, no, we don't want any state police. We don't want any state police. And they will kill it because Every IG does not want his powers to be decimated. But we are not in colonial times. Right now, policing has to go down to the grassroots. And it does not have that structure to do that. All these Amoteku, neighborhood watches, uh, Isba, and all those things, they are the ones that are sitting down there to try and, you know, give some kind of police presence, because in Nigeria, we have a lot of ungoverned spaces. Hmm. And the meaning of ungoverned spaces is that spaces where there are no law hmm. enforcement. And we have many of them. Okay. You know, so if we bring policy down to the grassroots, then at least there will be somebody okay, Mr. Macri. who can at least Mr. Macri. any kind of Information, Mr. Macri, let me stay with you. Let me stay so with you. If you can help me, uh, hello, sir. Structure. Let me quickly ask so you a pointed question. How we should be looking at it, but uh, I think people are taking this thing so personal okay, good. Uh, and uh, misinterpreting the whole idea. Good. Let me stay with you if you can help me in the next 30 seconds because I can see the body language of Mr. Ile. It's, it's not in doubt at all. He believes that Amotekun has come to stay. As someone who has seen Nigerian project, do you believe in what he said, that Amoteko has come to stay? Oh, yeah. Um, in fact, uh, I've said it many times in different fora, that if the federal government fails to provide security 
then they will lose that initiative and people have to do self-help. It's the Nigerian way. You know, if government does not give me water, I sit my borehole. If you don't give me light, I buy generator. That's what is going on. And I think when it comes to security, which is very personal to people, you know, I think they will react and they will have to go for something for themselves. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me go back to Mr. Ile. I, 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 well, well, I think from both of you and from a good number of Nigerians, they are in sync with this community policy. Now we are having some kind of cross purposes. Do you have an idea of what the police is saying about the federal police, I mean, community policing being guided by them? Are they planning to still have natives involved? Because that seems to be their language. And how is this in any way different from Amoteku? And if you can be fair enough to speak clearly, are you in support of this idea or sh they should just drop it and let's focus on this kind of initiative across the country? Well, I, I, um, I'll give my opinion here. Um, number one, I, I think that, um, I think that um, the community policing is a welcome idea. The only th challenge I have is I'm not sure that it should have been the federal government initiative. They should have allowed the states to drive it. This one, again, that we're going to have a central figure sitting in Abuja and trying to determine what goes on in my locality here in the battle. You see, it's, it's still like we are running a federal police. So what we are then having is federal community policing. Yes, the police said we will recruit from the localities, which is fine. It does not disturb what um, the Amateco people will do. They will also recruit from the locales anyway. And as I said, the more the I mean, if you only need to go down to the uh, United States of America there. There's the universities, they have their police. Local governments, they have their police. States, they have their police. Federal, they have, and they all operate within the same city. So one should not disturb the other. But what we need to get right is, you see, the, 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 the fair. And it's unfortunate that we politicize so many things after 60 years of independence. And this indeed has at times retarded our progress as a country. Because I see all the hula baloo and the, uh, and the, the hoopla about having a Western Nigeria security network or having South East security network. I'm not sure that is needed in a federal structure. We have 200 million people. We are saying that the existing structure is not adequate. At times we get, you see, let me, tell, let me even tell you what has exposed us badly. Because we now have our soldiers actively engaged at the war front. So we don't even have access to bring them again to do the internal policing, which occasionally we tend to bring them in. So we've been badly exposed. So if the states are now saying we are putting together outfits that will help, that will help, I see no reason why we should be afraid of that. It is basically a complementary effort for security in Nigeria. And it's the progress of Western Nigeria, as I say, it, is the progress of Nigeria. So I see nothing wrong in okay. that. Thank you so much. I, I, I've just got a signal. I, I'll, I'll try and come back to you to round off in 30 seconds. But let me get the final take of Mr. Uh, Amakri. Um, if, if you look at the body language, let me read what uh, Garba Shehu did say on a national TV. He said, whatever name they go by, Amotekun or whatever, will be streamlined and they will be run in accordance with the structure as defined by the Inspector General of Police. They will be localized, they will be owned by local communities, they will be managed by them. And one other thing he did say is that some of these states that are acting for federal policy don't have funds to run it. So uh, uh, do you think this is just an opinion of a presidential aid because we've seen cases where the president would distance himself from what the spokesperson said? But this looks like a well-thought-out statement. What do you think? If you can help me in 30 seconds, sir. Oh, we understand that we've lost that network. Let me put the question back to Mr. Uh, Oyele. What do you think? Well, I, 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 I wouldn't... I, let, let, let me be brutally frank. Hmm. I'm not sure, with due respect to Mr. Gabashio, if he 
flips it over and thinks about it properly. I'm not sure that he, he, he got his facts totally right when he said it will be controlled from the, from, um, the IG in Abuja. That is not the spirit behind Western Nigeria Security Network. And that is not the spirit behind federalism. I have said it over and over that what we have been running in Nigeria is what, we, is what I term a quasi-federal structure. A structure whereby all the states go to Abuja every month to, to collect money before they can survive. That's not okay. true federalism. So what the federal government is even saying concerning the community policing, what I'm told is that the states, the state governments are meant to fund the federal community police. I, I don't know how that's going to work. I was told that the 13 billion is just a takeoff grant and the states will be responsible for the personnel recruiting. Okay. I don't think that's going to work. So if you want to devolve policing, let the states handle it. And as Mr. Macri said earlier on, you'd be surprised that a lot of these states already are funding the police from their security votes. So why are we so scared of having state police? Okay. Moreover, moreover, when they say that, oh, we shouldn't have state police because, oh, the governors will misuse it. I don't believe that. There are enough laws in our constitution that will safeguard the citizen. Okay. Moreover, if Mr. President is not misusing the federal police, and he's also in Nigeria, so why should the governor be the one to misuse state police? Okay. So, you see, we really need to conquer our faith, confront our demons. Because if we don't do that, one day, one day, those demons will consume us as a country. So okay. we really need, we really need to face the fact that we want a federal structure that is equitable and works for everyone, not just a federal structure in name. It has to be federal in name and indeed. Indeed. It's as simple as that. And as I said earlier on, we are all stakeholders. No one has more stake than the other. Okay. Whatever steps the governors in the Southwest are taking is that, I think for that's a safe way to strengthening of Nigeria. I think your, your your views are totally clear. Quite quite clear. Thank you so much, Mr. Sheer Oyeleya, for your uh, insight on this issue, and we sincerely hope that it will be clear to all and sundry on what federal policing will be about and what Amotekun stands for. Thank you once again. I'm so sorry we're Thank not you, able Martin. to reconnect to uh, Dennis and Macri, but in absentia, we say thank you to you for creating time to have your insight on this issue. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, a journalist was verbally attacked. What is the implication of this? We'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. Concerned Christians and Muslims from Southern Kaduna Extraction have submitted a protest letter to the United Nations headquarters in Abuja calling on the international community to compel both the federal and Kaduna state government to stop the killings in Southern Kaduna. The group, which also submitted letters to the United States Embassy, the British High Commission and the European Union offices in the federal capital territory said the crisis has left thousands displaced and in dire need of humanitarian aid. We have gathered to come to bring to the attention of the international community the insecurity, the killing, the spirit of violence in northern Nigeria in general and especially in southern Kaduna in particular. We want their intervention uh, to make the state and the federal government act expeditiously to bring these killings to an end. We believe that there can never be peace without justice. So we want to call on the International Committee to prevail on the state and federal government to bring these killers to justice. We, we know that they are not spirits, they are human beings. So they can be found, they can be gotten, they can be brought to justice. This will act as a deterrent to whoever would want to cause such havoc or mayhem in the future. We are also seeking the help of the international committees to come to the aid of those that have been displaced by this crisis. Like I earlier said, most of our people are farmers. They can't go to their farm these days uh, because they are killed daily in their farms. And they have even been displaced from their homes, their ancestral lands. So they are just sojourners now in their land. So we are calling on the international community to come to their aid with however way they can. We as the concerned Christians and Muslims of Nigeria, we are here to solicit for the support of the uh, international communities. We want them to come in to see how they can be able to assist us, to see how we can be able to stop the killings 
in the northern Nigeria and Nigeria as a whole. So we solicit, we ask for the support of the United Nations, the international communities, the American government, the British High Commission, the Canadian and uh, the European Union. So we ask for their support to come in to see how we can be able to stop the killings. The killers are human like us. So if there is any way we can forge ahead and go forward to see how we can be able to tackle this, they should please help us. If the government will take up their responsibility the right way and take the bull by the horn to stop this, it can be stopped. If security is put in place to fight and um, stop the terrorists, this will be stopped. We feel that the government are um, having a lackluster attitude towards the whole killings and our people are killed daily in huge numbers. It's very painful. I'm from Southern Kaduna and I'm, I'm a peace ambassador. I believe in peace if only the right authorities would do the right thing. So we're here to solicit with the international community to come to our aid to get their hands involved in this and solve it once and for all. I will submit this to the resident coordinator who is the highest ranking official of the United Nations in the country. Um, the contents of the petition will be reviewed um, and what I expect that an appropriate response will be provided. Uh, we, you probably need to be aware that the resident coordinator has already been in touch with uh, some high-ranking officials in the government already about this issue. Um, the UN has already sent a mission to some of those places to establish what the issues are. So I suspect that uh, within the next couple of days, in response to your petition, you will get a response.